All right, so this is Robert Forsh with the YouTube channel Truth, and I wanted to uh, show you the moon set and how the moon is self-luminating. I've got my uh, heavy-duty 2200 lumen light here, and uh, as you can hear, the wind chimes is moving, but definitely not having upside down wind chimes in relationship to that one or that one. This is in the Myrtle Beach, South Carolina area. About four miles away from the ocean, which is directly over that away. Right there, about four miles away. In the summer, the sun approaches from over there. Today it'll come up over there. In the summer, the sun will set over there. Today it's going to set over there. And uh, earlier in winter, it sat way over there. As you can see, the moon is high in the sky, and there's not a bunch of light coming at it to light it up. It's self-luminating. We live on a stationary level plane. We're in an enclosed system with a firmament that's up above us. The moon right now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and show you, this is uh, pollen season right now, so there's a, a lot of pollen in the air, but at other times of the year when it's not pollen, there's a lot of obviously reflective material, the uh, geoengineering or the solar management as it's sometimes called. This right here would be the numbers for today. I'm showing both cameras. I'm going to be zooming in on the moon in just a little bit. There you can see the percentages. I wanted to uh, go live to establish location and, uh, and time for all of this. <laughs> and I've got two, two devices going. The iPhone 11 and the P1000. I'm going to zoom in on it now. If you're watching a non-magnified view, you're watching the the live feed. We've got a low humidity and uh, I'll show you the numbers on the weather here in just a moment. So I say stationary level earth because, well, the earth isn't moving. There would be no level anywhere on a spinning water ball hurling through space. It's not popular to say that. It's not really flat, so I upset a lot of flat earthers because I'm, uh-oh. Well, let's see. Looks like I lost my broadcast. trying to reconnect here. So, sorry for that. Unfortunately, I lost my broadcast here. I'm going to see if I can change that. Okay, I had to... Uh, because I had a couple of devices going, there's been an interaction there. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and show this again. You can see the light beam, and obviously there's not a bunch of light coming anywhere from the sun, which will be approaching from over there. I wanted to establish location because the, the moon, I've been taking pictures of the moon and video of the sun and the moon and some stars for years, and the movement cannot be explained by 
uh, a rotation of a supposed sphere, the globe that we're told by the officials that we live on. Well, they're lying, and I ain't buying. Zooming in again here. So what I want to illustrate is the features on the moon look different from different vantage points. I've got friends all over the earth that take pictures of the moon at the different phases and seasons and all of that, times of the day. Relative humidity matters. We're at uh, in 55% humidity right now. Temperature is in the low 40s and the breeze is about 11 miles an hour. So supposedly we would be rotating in a easterly direction, some say tilted on an axis, and we live on a spinning, wobbling, pear-shaped. That's, that's not true. We don't have wind chimes hanging upside down anywhere in relationship to other wind chimes. You can call me anytime if you're concerned with my cosmology, theology, sociology. I'm actually a born-again Christ follower about that. I'm kind of reeling from trying to get my videos back out there because what happened in December, YouTube slash Google took my liked videos playlist, said I had tens of millions of occurrences all over the world here in the internet, and they made it private. They made all of our liked videos playlists private. For over a year now, I had been encouraging people to make your liked videos playlist public and share that link wherever you can. Reason for that is it's a powerful way of communicating that information. What information? Well, it's more than the shape of the earth. It has to do with the uh, shape of your soul. And artificial intelligence is a huge existential threat to humanity. Right now we've got apparently a coronavirus <laughs> going around the globe. There's globes in all this global news and global officials, the World Health Organization, and they're spinning their globes. and. It's a bit nauseating, but they've installed themselves as the self-appointed experts, and I'm exposing them for the deceivers that they are. So we've got people like Elon Musk that are apparently brilliant, okay, but he's believing we exploded into existence billions of years ago. Big fail, Elon. Nice car. <laughs> so I like the uh, I like the Teslas. I've ordered the Cybertruck. I'm not buying the uh, space fantasy. Okay, let me uh, <clears throat> let me get this out. It's uh, it's Photoshop because it has to be. Let's see if I can do this without with two devices. Nighttime, windy, it's kind of tough, but I like the uh, I like the car. Fastest production car ever. I've ordered the Cybertruck. The tri-motor, and I've requested a factory transformer type snow plow. It's got to be factory because otherwise it would void warranty, but there's no complete smackdown on Ford 150s and all the other diesel super trucks if you can't put a snow plow on it, right? That's what I'm talking about. So I, I talked to a representative of Tesla and I said, hey, <laughs> I would like to see a, a factory snow plow. Pardon me. She said, yeah, we, we started talking about that a few days ago. I said, well, I tweeted back to Elon in a comment. Did it come from there? Could be. I mean, I woke up and I thought, man, they got to have a snow plow where they don't have a, a, a truck replacement, a work truck replacement. Can run welders from that. 
apparently 220 volt could power up a house. What happens when uh, when the grid goes down? Well, I've got some power here, deep cycle batteries, inverters, that type of thing. But wouldn't it be nice to be able to plug in your car and power your house? Yeah, temporarily. And then when we have a sustained power outage, potentially, remember artificial intelligence has administrative access to the entire internet, including the creation and distribution of electricity. So your, your solar system on the top of your house can actually fuel up your vehicle, potentially. I would like to have an adapter to charge car to car if I needed to. I'm an innovator. I'm an innovator. I think way outside the box for a long time. So I've even um, listened to like the architects of artificial intelligence talking about how that works and I found out that I've got some serious capabilities in working on some of the details of that type of thing, whether it's autonomous driving or options. Let's say we automated the power grid when it came time to Y2K it. I had a lot of firewood and generators and all of that. We lived in Wisconsin. Imagine living in Wisconsin in the winter for Y2K. I've actually put a plow on a on a truck. Did a lot of cutting and welding and modifying. Can't do that to this or it would void the warranty. So it's got to be a factory one. I would like to see it integrated into the front end of the vehicle so that it can flip around and be right there. Be on the truck all the time. So I featured uh, ballistic rated vehicles. That's amazing. The armor glass. So to be clear, Elon Musk is a genius. Okay. I acknowledge that. I sent him a shirt like that, my YouTube Truth stickers, and Tesla Racing. Imagine this vehicle being a, this could be, you could have this vehicle actually have a whole bunch of Tesla vehicles at the uh, Indy 500, or this one leading the pack and pulling away from the Indy car racers. I don't know if the power to weight ratio and traction limits could exceed that of a uh, Indy car on the in Indianapolis 500, but in a straight line, apparently this might even be faster than those cars. That's why I came up with Tesla Racing or that that idea of promoting that and putting me behind the wheel, sending that to Elon. I wanted to make sure that he knew who the heck I was. I sent it to him in a in about a four foot tall tube like a SpaceX. He's getting paid billions of dollars to put on a fireworks display and the whole scientific community brainwashing humanity with a false reality. Saying we're spinning a thousand thirty eight miles an hour at the equator. That would mean all these uh, wind chimes and bird baths and toilets have an upside down in relationship to these. It's not true. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. Upside down doesn't work. Okay? There's up and down. There would be no plumb and le or level on a spinning water ball hurling through space. So it's not about the information, it's about the individual. There's no, you know, I could say, hey, watch this video and you'll become a flat earther. Not necessarily. People largely believe the lie they want to believe. It's the way it is. It's unfortunate. I can't wake people up. I can be, um, I can be a, a catalyst for consideration. I'm up about 20 hours a day, 58 years old, feel great. I tip the scales at about 220 of don't freaking mess with me. <laughs> and I'll say it with a smile. Um, 
because that's kind of the way it is. It's a bit tragic having friends and family, people I meet that are obviously deceived and they don't know it. They don't want to know they don't know. So as we wake up to a lot of this, uh, the fact that we're living in much of a false reality, people um, get kind of put off when they're, they're told, yeah, you know what, you, you, missed the, you missed the mark, you missed the target. All of this stuff is a lie. How about, how about Jesus? Is he a lie too? Do we have to call him Yah, Yeshua? I would say Yahweh, for sure. The Bible, uh, the author of Scripture, you can. The Living Word, the Living Water, the Great I Am, the Alpha and Omega. I'm not saying, I'll let the Bible speak for itself. God's Word is true, and all others are suspect. So I'm a Bible believer. We're living in a point in time where apparently we're going to see some mandatory lockdowns, mandatory implanting, taking the mark of the beast, wor worshiping the image of the beast. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Can't make me. So it's show and tell. I'm showing and I'm telling. A lot of people are living in a false reality. They don't know it. They don't want to know. They want to believe they've got it figured out. They want to maybe upload themselves to the internet, get them a neural link or a neural lace like Elon Musk is talking about. I do like his video uh, that he, or a video that he's in, Do You Trust This Computer? So if you want to see some of the architects of AI, see who I'm following on Twitter. Yeah, these guys are and gals, these people are brilliant. However, they've missed the, they don't have the true wisdom of recognizing the, the true creator. Oh, I'm sure it's way too windy to have that on. So I'm going to say, hey, go ahead and check out my, um, my playlist. I've got many playlists on my channel exposing the reality of the world we live in. Artificial intelligence is more like the Terminator. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 says to everybody forever, they refused to love the truth and so be saved. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion. So, do you feel yourself spinning, wobbling, or gyrating? <laughs> it's, it's a bit crazy, isn't it? But it's the reality of the world we live in. It's, we live in a stationary level earth. This is Robert Forsch with the YouTube channel Truth. Feel free to reach out anytime. Thank you so much.